Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. I thought I would touch on this just because it's in this chapter, and I thought, well, I'm preaching on tongues, I'm just going to go through this chapter and finish it. So in 1 Corinthians 14, one teaching we get here that's very clear in the Bible, that women are to keep silence in churches. Now, a lot of people misunderstand what it means for a woman to keep silence in church. So I just want to explain this to you so you don't get the wrong idea. Because when you hear women keep silence in church, you know, some people just think, well, can a woman not say anything? You know, just sit there, quiet. No, no, that doesn't make sense because women are, are expected to sing. Right? So what, when the Bible says that women should keep silence in church for it is not permitted unto them to speak, what is it talking about? Is it talking about, you know, women aren't even allowed to make, you know, aren't allowed to laugh. They have to be careful if they shuffle a bit too loud. You know, you can't tell your child off and say, hey, Simon, sit still. You know, the husband has to do that because a woman has to keep silence in church. No, because, you know, you should sing and things like that in church. You know, you can laugh. Um, I don't think women should be saying amen, though. Because this is what I believe the Bible is talking about. If you think about the context of 1 Corinthians 14, what is it talking about? It's talking about edifying and speaking to the church. So that's what the Bible is talking about. When the Bible says that women should keep silence in the church, it doesn't mean you can't talk after the fellowship, you can't ask questions, you can't have conversation with people. You can't, once you come to church, you walk through those doors, you're in the, it's just like you can't say hello, you, know, you just walk behind your husband. No, no, no. It's saying women are not permitted to address the church like I'm addressing now. This is what the Bible's talking about. That's why in our church we don't have women pray. We don't have women sing a special to the church. You sing congregationally. We don't have women pray. We don't have women read the Bible. We don't have women preach. right? And women should not be bishops and deacons either um, like in the world we see today. Women are meant to keep silence in the church. It's a man's job in the church because God wants to maintain the hierarchy that men are in charge, right? And women follow. So that's how it is at church as well. Women keep silence when it comes to the address of the church and women are never to address the congregation as a whole congregation. Now we see this in 1 Timothy 2 where we get an idea. See, it's not just they're just silent completely. It says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. So you remember the, the context of 1 Corinthians 14 is women addressing the church, teaching, edifying the church. That's what God doesn't want. And that's why when the Bible says, let the women learn in silence, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, what are they speaking? They're speaking like, let the prophets speak, one or two. Right? The teachers speaking, they're not just speaking, you know, after the meeting's over and we're just sort of fellowshipping or we're having dinner. It's when they address the congregation. Let the woman, 1 Timothy 2, learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer. I don't allow, the Bible says, not a woman to teach. So you see there, it's learn in silence to teach. The speaking is the edifying of the church. Nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Now, it's not to say that you never have authority over a man. I think what this is saying is, in principle, Men are in charge at church. Women should not be in charge. So it's not that women never are, have an authority over men, but I just don't think women are in charge. So you might say, hey, you have a, an event that you're organizing and some men help, and in that sense, you've got some authority because you've got people that are helping you. But you're not in charge of the church because you still have men in charge of you making sure that it's done according to God's word. So it's not that there can't be children that you're over you know, so you might have a ministry where you play games for children it's like okay a woman if she's organizing games with them, then none of the boys can play it's only girls because you can't usurp authority over a man right over a a, 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 a man child even or a youth no i just think this is what it's teaching here is hey when you learn in silence in the address of the congregation women are not in charge men are in charge men teach and men edify the church and that's why the Bible's saying here, let the woman learn in silence, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. So this is why I don't believe women during the preaching should say amen. 
You know, women during the teaching, during the Bible reading, during the prayer, they should just be silent and listen, right? And let the men speak. Now, when it comes to congregational singing, that's different because everybody's singing. The church is not being addressed from one place. It's just everyone singing together. That's why that's different. But a few other questions, because I know this is probably raising some questions in your mind, because people have asked me these things before, and uh, I just thought I would mention it because it's in this chapter. But what people ask me about is in verse 35. Right? You're probably wondering about verse 35. They're commanded, under, they're commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the Lord. Verse 35. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. So I've already addressed what I believe it's talking about when women speak in the church. It's not talking about just general conversation amongst people, like women can't talk afterwards, or even you can't even talk to men afterwards. It's talking about women addressing the church, like I'm addressing the church now. Now, here's my thoughts on verse 35. A lot of people have read verse 35, and they think, yeah, you say that it's just women addressing the church, but the Bible seems to indicate here that women shouldn't be talking at all until they get home, because the Bible says here, hey, if you want to learn anything, you've got to ask your husband at home. So can you then go to a brother in Christ afterwards and say, hey, I, you know, come to me even, and maybe a lady will come to me and say, hey, can you just clarify what you were saying? Or they'll go to somebody else. I didn't really understand what Victor was preaching, you know, is that what you thought? Is that you know, getting asking questions, even giving an opinion and saying, oh, "Is that what, maybe it's this?" You know, just general discussion. Is this what this is outlawed? I don't believe so, right? Because, like I said, when it talks about addressing the church, this is what it's talking about. You're sitting in it right now, where the church is assembled and and the church is being addressed. That's what it's condemning for a woman. Now, when this assembly is broken up, right, and we start talking in little groups, some people go back there and. You know, not everyone stays around. I don't believe that's what this, that the church is talking about anymore. Like when it talks about keeping silence in the church, it's not just talking about just people in general. Because if you can't talk afterwards, when does the church stop? You know, like if you meet somebody later on down the week and you're both part of the church, I mean, you're meant to keep silence too because you're both part of the church. But what, when are you in church? When are you out of church? Right now where I'm sitting is, my position is, what, what you're sitting in right now is church. When you're called together, you're at attention, there's an address, there's singing, and then eventually this address stops. Right? It's the same at dinner, right? At dinner, the address has stopped. Not everyone sticks around. Not everyone, you know, it's not a sin if you forsake the, the, the dinner. Um, and there's just general conversation that's just going on at different parts of the table. That's different to everyone at attention, listening to edifying, listening to preaching, or listening to prayer. So what do I believe this is talking about? What I think this is talking about is if, if, we, re, if we think about the context of 1 Corinthians 14, it's people that have, a, have something to contribute to the edification of the church. Right? People come, they have a psalm, they have a doctrine, they have some preaching, and men in that address to the church are preaching and edifying the church. But what I think this is saying is sometimes a woman will have a revelation from God, right? She'll learn something from the scriptures. She'll have something that is to, that can benefit the edifying of the church. But how does she then share that with the church? This is why I think it's saying, hey, if you learn anything, that means you get some knowledge or some revelation from your own Bible reading or something, and it's something that's beneficial. It's saying, hey, that's when you would speak to your husband at home. You'd ask him about it at home. And, you know, you can get that initial verification. So people will say, well, what if I don't have a husband? Right? Like, because I, I think this is talking about the ideal scenario. The ideal scenario is that people marry young, they're marrying a believer, they have a husband that's leading the home. That's what I believe this is referring to. So I think by extension, this is my opinion, by extension, that means, you know, maybe if you don't have a husband, but you've got a saved brother, you know, you can check. It's basically saying, hey, check with somebody privately. It's not for you as a woman to say, hey, I've got something to edify the church. Can I speak? Can I, you know, during the announcement, say this and share my knowledge with the church? No, it needs to be channeled through the men so that, like God has it in the church, that men are the ones that speak and are in authority at church. So that's what I believe it's talking about. And that's why I think it says, let them ask their husbands at home. And then there's the four. Why? Because... So why, if you learn anything, you ask your husband at home, 
because it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Right? So it's not saying that you just general conversation because the, the women, remember, the speaking at church is the address. And I know I'm just driving this point forward. I'm just hoping you guys understand what I'm saying. So it's the speaking in church. It's saying, for it's a shame for a woman to speak in the church because she cannot edify the church directly. It goes through the other channels, right? If she learns something, ask it about your husband or a brother, or even if you don't have saved family and friends, that's when you might approach the men here and say, hey, I, this is something I learned. I think this might help people. And that happens. Do you know that? A lot of, sometimes the stuff in my sermons comes from my wife. Where she, you know, she'll get something from God and she thinks, hey, this is, a, she talks to me about it. Is this something that's biblical? And I say, hey, that's good. And then I include it in my sermon. So it works like that amongst other people too. Like, you know, like maybe Edna gets something. She speaks to Lewis and then Lewis talks to me about it. Or maybe Lewis, in mean, his preaching, you know, if he gets to preach one day, is he shares something that was actually revealed to Edna. You know what I'm saying? So this is what I believe this is talking about. This is how women contribute to the edifying of the church they channel it through the men who are in authority and then they are the gatekeepers of what actually gets taught to the church so a couple other things as well because i just want to address this too but sometimes people will ask me so i already said hey it's about the preaching the praying singing reading i already said amens i don't think are, are right and it's not just talking about general noise when it talks about women's keeping silence you know calming your children down you know bodily noises, you know, laughing, that sort of stuff. Now, one thing people ask me is, I've had somebody ask me this, what about social media groups? Right? Because I've had people say to me before, they have a problem with women commenting in social media groups. And that's, that's, that's always an interesting question. I honestly had never thought about it. I've thought about it, now I'm going to share with you my thoughts. Right? Social media groups. Say, for example, we've got a church WhatsApp channel. You know? Is, is a woman allowed to comment in that WhatsApp channel and tell people what they think? It's like, hey, they're addressing the whole church. Or a Facebook group. You know, we've got a Facebook group. You can post that. People will post questions and people will discuss on there. If you're not on Facebook and you want to be in the Facebook group, just let me know. Um, but people discuss things on there. We post things that are happening and, and, that's, uh, and I really like uh, how Facebook works in that, in that instance. And people will say, well, should women be posting things? Because if a woman posts something in the Facebook group, is she speaking to the church? Because, you know, we live in a technological age now. It's, you know, back then, it's, you had to speak to a congregation. But now, you know, electronically, you can speak to the whole congregation. Now, why don't I think WhatsApp or Facebook groups is church? Well, this is what I said to this individual that was sort of challenging me on this and saying, hey, you shouldn't let women comment in these channels and comment on Facebook. I was... I was saying, well, first thing I said to them was, well, if that's church, if the Facebook group is church, then your, your wife needs a Facebook account, right? Because if your wife is not on Facebook, then she's forsaking the assembly. Right? Whereas at church, you know, it's not like you just come to church and your wife doesn't go to church. If Facebook group and WhatsApp is church, why aren't the children in the Facebook group? So that's why I draw a line between social media groups and church. Because church, men, their wives, their children are expected to be here. If you forsake this gathering, you are forsaking the assembly. You're in sin. But if you say, you know what, I don't want Facebook spying on me and all that sort of stuff, right? And you say, I'm not going to be part of the Facebook group. Because you're not in sin, because it's not church. You don't have to be part of the Facebook group. If somebody says, I don't want to install WhatsApp, then you know you have to install it. You're not in sin. It just, just makes it difficult to communicate with everyone, right? So it's the same thing. So that's how I see it. So that's how I see social media groups. And you already understand what I think about dinner table conversation, because this if I that's where I draw the line. This address here where everyone's expected to be here, and if you're not here, you're forsaking the assembly. That is what we're talking about when we're talking about in church. Not one-on-one -on -one conversation, not the greeting, not, you know, a conversation over dinner, not text messaging, you know, and women think like, oh, if I can't text message in the church group, should I create like a women's only group and things like You know, this is like adding, you know, commandments to the Bible that don't need to be there, right? 